They say a picture is worth a thousand words. So like what, like a thousand pictures could be like a hundred million words or something. I don't know. But today we're going to show you just how a picture can be a major, major part of your storytelling. We're going to talk about using photography for storytelling. And it all starts now. Hey guys, welcome to the Church Media Guys Show. I'm Dave. This is Justin. Wait, he's over here. He's over on this side. There he is. There's Justin. Say hi, Justin. What's going on, guys? What's going on, Dave? Hey, What's going on, everyone? Uh, hanging out and chatting on YouTube and and uh, soon to be Facebook. YouTube. We've been hanging out here chatting for a while. We got a new guy who is excited to learn BV Kumar, Doctor BV Kumar from the BV Kumar Foundation. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Kumar. Uh, guys, this is the Church Media Guy show where we learn how to use and exploit media and technology so we can take the gospel to the world. I'm Dave. I'm the founder, co-founder of ChurchTrainAcademy.com. Justin, sitting over here, is the other co-founder. He's the guy that um, when I uh, said, I can't do this alone, and I yelled out to him and stuff, and he said, no, okay, I'll come help. And so that's Justin. So y'all uh, y'all be sure to say hi to Justin in the chat. Uh, so, Justin, today we're talking with uh, an old friend of ours, Mr. Ben Stapley, going to be talking about um, photography and storytelling and all that. Um, did, um, did you guys at your church or have you guys at your church incorporated, like, photography beyond just like a picture to put up on the website like like using it for social stuff using it for uh, and, and i'm talking like in-depth photography of like of like the people at your church stuff you guys been doing that yeah so we we do uh we we have what i call intentional photography uh -huh. so i don't want to just capture although i always say that i just shoot a thousand pictures and hope one of them comes out uh -huh. but uh, every every time I do shoot those ranges of pictures, I always try to capture a moment and more specifically how how we feel during that moment. So if I'm in the children's nursery, I just don't want to capture kids playing. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to capture kids feeling safe, feeling loved on. Uh, when I when I when I go and capture a a, a conference or a, a lunch, maybe let's just say a lunch. I don't want to just capture people eating. Right. I want to capture people experiencing community. And so I. So I think it's I'm like okay beyond it. stock photography, you know. The, yeah, beyond for stock photography, right. I I really want to not only capture just what's happening, but capture the moment, the feeling, the mm. excitement, the community, the the purpose of what's going on, and the way my mind works. I always pick. I always think of what am I going to say, mm -hmm. and then how can I wrap that that what we call copy. That's the only word that comes to my right. head right now. But how can I wrap what I say or what I want to say? Uh, around this picture of what's in front of me. So instead of just taking a picture of a kid playing, you know, I might, um, I might want to say something like our kids feel loved mm. uh, and are cared for even while you're uh, in service. And right. so I want to make sure I get a picture of, okay, well, this kid's playing, but you know, the, the teacher's really getting up close to him and, and engaging with him and helping him one-on-one -on -one with the fine motor skills. Maybe he's a five-year-old. And so I really want to capture an angle that shows that, that intimacy and that care yeah. rather than just a kid playing with blocks. I want to capture the, the adult, the teacher, the mentor with him. Uh, and so that's how I have always approached it. But Ben, as we're going to find out, takes it a step further. And so I, I'm even jotting down notes Good. On, on how to do this. Good deal. I've, I've Y'all even a... reel on me for a minute about <laughs> taking a thousand photos. <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, going right along with, uh, with, with our photography storytelling thing. Um, I have a pro tip I want to share with you guys real quick. That I think is going to blow your mind. Ack. Why did it do that? There. Hey guys, today's pro tip is really cool. It goes right along with um, the topic of today's show, the the storytelling through photography and stuff. Wouldn't it be great if you had all the skills necessary to take a picture of, say, like one of those little kids on the playground with the teacher and all the, the minutia and the stuff that's going on behind them, and you were able to like just remove all the extra stuff and cut out just the kid 
and the teacher together and then put them on some other background, some sort of a color background. We actually had somebody in the Church Media Hacks group ask that question. They had a picture that they found of like a handful of people kind of hugging each other and giggling and hosing around and stuff, you know, and they were all happy and, and great. And uh, their background was just like some really good, pretty yellow background, okay? Um, and, you know, it's one of those pictures that you can use as the base for some other kind of picture. And the guy was asking, how do I make a picture like this? How do I remove people from the background, cut them out, and, and, then, and then get them looking good? You know, and we said, okay, you got to shoot on a green screen, okay? That's one thing. Um, or you're going to have to, like, rotoscope them, cut them out, mask them out, do stuff like that. Well, that's a Photoshop skill. That's something that I've been working to master for years where you remove them and their hair is still kind of, you can still see the bits and pieces of their hair and all that sort of stuff. Well, Justin, my brilliant partner here, found a fantastic tool that will help you do that. It makes it ridiculously easy. They've got a free version and then they've got some paid version. Okay. Now I want to show you this. It's called background dot, excuse me. Yeah. Remove, sorry, remove dot BG. So like remove dot background, remove dot BG. Um, you guys have got to check this out. You basically load up your picture. You can upload a photo or you can enter a URL to where the photo is. And then in about five, 10 seconds, it goes through and it keeps the object and removes all the background. And it does it really, really cleanly. Uh, Justin, I tried this and was really surprised. I just did the free. I just, you know, upload a thing. And, and the free version, it's like, it doesn't let you do like super HD or 4K or something like that. It's like, you can only do, I think you can, you can do like a four megapixel picture. So like, you know, 4,000 by 4,000 is what you're going to download no matter what you upload. Right. And I don't even think it's that. I think it's like in the equivalent of like 480i or 480p. No, it, it it's, it's not, it's not that, it's not that low. It's not okay. that low. I know Hope for that sure. low to me. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I uploaded, I uploaded like a 20 megapixel photo and got something that was usable. Um, but okay. you know, if I was going to be doing some like real serious composite work and all that, I wouldn't use that. I would be using like the, the HD level, you know, the much higher 10 megapixel or whatever, but for like nine bucks a month, if you're doing a lot of this, this takes a lot of the hard work out of you. When I do this in Photoshop, like I've had to do it with you. I mean, y'all look at Justin's hair. You see Justin's all spiky hair. So he he gave me some shots that that he took <laughs> against like a neutral background, and that's how we make our thumbnails. I like go and cut him out and stuff like that. And I have a hard time with the appropriate tools getting in there and getting it just right. I end up losing some of his hair or keeping some of the background. This thing is phenomenal. You guys have got to check it out. Remove .bg. Try it for free. I'm serious. You can do like 150 of these images a month for like nine bucks. And so if you're in the creative space, if you're doing this for your church and you want to have a little more flexibility, but don't have the time to really become the Photoshop genius, this is going to like speed up your workflow. Amazing. You guys are going to be like ridiculously blown away at just how good this is. So Justin, you Dave, wanna, you want to, you want to talk to Ben? Let's talk to Ben. Okay. We can talk to Ben. Let's talk to Ben. Here comes Ben. Ben Stapley is the Weekend Experience Director of Christ Fellowship in Miami. He oversees the worship, the communication, the production, the digital experience, and they serve about 10,000 people each weekend. And what makes it really cool is that Ben has taken time out of his busy, busy weekend to come and play with me and little old Justin. Hey, man, how are you? It's great to be here. I think, you know what? This is funny. I saw on my Facebook, you know how they give you those updates? You know, a year ago, this happened. I got an update. A year ago, we chatted. So it was nice for Facebook to remind me Aww. that over a year ago, we chatted for the first time. And I'm glad you guys have had me back on. I've loved learning from your additional guests over the past year. So, But it's great to be back with you guys as well. Awesome. Thanks. Why well, has has been here? I guess we're going to have to squeeze you in a couple more times uh, throughout the course of the year instead of just meeting once for an hour. I'll take it. You're doing like a lot of storytelling using photography. I mean, that, that seems to be kind of the, the thing you've grasped on onto here and really sunk your teeth into. Uh, how did this come about? Hmm. It, it, it probably... It, uh, it came about for, for me just because that, that's the way I'm built. I'm, I'm, a, I'm visually oriented. And whenever somebody tells me a story, I start to like see it from a cinemagraphic perspective. And I start, you know, I start 
creating those shots in my head as you know, Hey, I, you know, I, I went to school and I see there's an establishing shot, you know, and then I, I met my teacher and okay, I see a reaction to share, shot. And so I, I intuitively think visually and, um, photography is, is a great way to do it. Um, I'm talking about film and photography here, but from, from a photography standpoint, it's, it's a little lower entry in terms of getting into the medium where film, it gets a little more expensive, a little more expertise is needed. You need good sound. You need good lighting. You need a crew. Um, so photography is, uh, has always intrigued me because it is visual and it's got a bar for entry. So as a kid, I could buy cheap Polaroids. Um, I could borrow my dad's camera and get the film de developed. Uh, and even now, you know, you can buy relatively inexpensive cameras or even use your phones because the technology is so darn cheap and good at this point that everyone has, uh, has access to this. So I kind of pivoted where it's not just me, it's uh, like my personal communication style. It's a, how do I equip the next generation of storytellers to use these devices that we all have access to. And there's really no excuse not to fully leverage them. That, that's cool. How, uh, you and I think a whole lot alike. I mean, I, I've got an extremely visual um, mind, creative mind and stuff. And it's funny, um, you know, you, you talk about looking at something and kind of seeing how it would compose on the screen, you know, kind of, kind of doing this, you know, and how's it going to look, you know, inside the uh, 16 by 9. What, um, or, or nine by 16 at this point, but yeah, I know, I know there's, there's that whole, uh, Insta, whatever it's called. Um, how, um, how, how do you, um, how do you, well, first off, what's the difference between, uh, telling a story like through photography versus trying to tell it visually through, uh, film or, or through motion? Mm. Yeah, uh, that's a great question for, I would say broad brushstrokes here is film. You are, you're telling a narrative. You're, you're taking someone on a journey and through some type of emotional, uh, um, some, through, through an emotional journey, right? right? We all know the story arc, beginning, middle, end. We all know that that curve looks like as well. If you've taken any type of rudimentary film or storytelling course, uh, photography is on the, on the opposite. You, um, you are um, encasing an emotion. Because it's a moment, you're not taking anyone on a journey, you're freezing that moment and you're, you're, you're having them to stay in that moment, which is nice and different than the majority of our experiences nowadays. You know, uh, this conversation is, it's moving along in a linear fashion, you know, we're going to, we're going to hit the middle at some point and then you're going to wrap up and say, leave Ben. Um, but photography forces us to be in the moment. And in terms of our culture being so busy, 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 go, go, go. Um, it says, no, 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 look at this and don't leave. Right. And we all know what those arresting images have been that we've seen in our life and or ones that we've taken or we want others to see and say this is a powerful moment do not avert your eyes look at this and be in this moment that that's the unique power of photography in contrast to film or other other you know visual communication mm -hmm. mediums yeah i i find i find when you're when you're using a motion picture you are able to more easily craft the message in fact there's there's message and there's meaning, right? And, and I remember like, like day one in radio and television, they, they taught us that, um, that the meaning is in the person, not in the message. And so when you're using motion, you're able to help, help them derive the meaning, right? By, by using, you know, forming the message over there. But when it's just a single photograph, you're leaving them to infer a whole lot, you know, to, to, I think there's more depth. I think more depth can happen because they may see something that you never intended, and um, and and I, I can see it being really powerful. Are you are you are you getting good success? Are you are you are you seeing? Um, are you getting the results? I guess you want through uh, such powerful imagery. Yeah, um, you're right. Um, with with photography, there is more. There's less dictor, uh, directorial intent. You know, what did the director mean by this? So in a movie. Um, they're telling you a lot about that. They're oftentimes on the DVD commentary there. They will then explain what they were meaning by that. You know, when Thanos snapped his fingers, this is what I intended. But so they're, they're, you know, really over film will over explain the meaning of a message in photography. You're right. It's uh, it's a lot less to be inferred by the, by the audience in terms of like, you know, having success. Yeah. Um, it's like something really silly, but successful on our end recently at Christ fellowship is we had a big team night and, in the past, um, team nights for us, um, we, we did them like once a year, and it was an all-campus uh, rally. 
And it was, it was big and it was bold and it was high production and um, like really, really strong vision casting. And we turned the corner and said, no, no, this is going to be a more local event. It's going to be more low key. It's, going to be, it's still going to be fun, uh, but it's going to be a lot different. And like, how do we convey this? And something really silly is we, we had a giveaway prize with a t-shirt and the, um, uh, our, our, our lead pastor, Rick Blackwood, his face on it with a caption underneath, you know, I love Rick. And we were, we were throwing a couple of, uh, of these away uh, as, as prizes. And so like for us to catch the vision of the night, we just had a photo uh, of one of our campus pastors like holding it up. And that, that photo conveyed a lot of what the meaning of the night was going to be. And for, so again, like to create culture, it was like, hey, we, we have to gear change here. How do we tell it? How do we show it? And let's make sure we, we show it. And this is a great way for us to do it. So that, like that photo, you know, are we being successful in terms of storytelling? that this is what you should expect with this evening. This is the new direction we're going to go in. Yes, it was successful because we said, this is what we're going to do. And this is the right photo that conveys that. So that's just one example. But like, yeah, the, that um, you can be super successful with how you're storytelling to your audience through photography. So how do you go about uh, planning something like this? Uh, like, you know, of course, we always know Sunday's coming up, maybe an event's coming up. Maybe there's a moment that we want to capture, but we don't know exactly how to plan to capture that moment. I know myself, I just, honestly, it's pray and pray for me. I take a thousand photos and I hope one of them <laughs> captures a moment. Is there a way to plan better for that? You're killing me. You're killing me. You know what? I, this, is, this is hilarious. This is like a generational thing. And like, Dave, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. But like one of the biggest things that I've, I've had to do, I'm, I'm a 40-year-old now, um, and I grew up in the, the, you know, um, the, the dark room days where you would have yep. to develop yeah. film. Oh, absolutely. And, and it, you know, you would, it would cost money to, you know, first of all, your role had 24, you had 24 shots. You got to make them count. And then it costed $10 to develop it, whatever. And like, you know, so there was a, since there was a high cost in there, um, people developed, photographers had to develop their eye. Um, And so, you know, you talk about, I'm just going to tackle on what you said, like the, you know, the, what'd you say? The spray, the shoot and spray. spray. (laughs) Right. That's like the one, that's like one of the first things I need to work out of younger photographers. I I agree. And it's, it's, this was, this, was, this was where it started for me was, was a, a Canon that, you know, going on vacations with my dad. And I remember counting, counting the, the film, you know, going, okay, oh, I got to roll a 36. Okay. You know, but you think, you think, you think, you think, and you make sure and you make sure and you, you yeah. do all that. So, yeah. I, <laughs> so, that, so, so working some of that. That out of uh, out of younger photographers is helpful. Even like practices of like, hey, we're we're all going to go on a walk. You know, we're all going to walk and do a photo walk, and each of us has ten photos to take. And I'm I'm going to look at your metadata and see if you deleted some. Like, you know, it should say zero 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 one zero 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 two. I I can't see any numbers jump here when we look at your raw photos. Um, and so like That's those right. type of exercises are great ways to work out some of those tendencies. It's like as a starting point in terms of being very intentional with the photos that you want to take. Um, like be, beyond that, being intentional with the photos. Another thing is like super helpful is a shot list it's like going into a, if you're if you're in a church environment or whatever whatever environment it is and you're looking to set up a team of photographers to succeed they should know what this sh- what the event looks like and the shot list now um like, like that's just really low-hanging fruit um, and this is super helpful right you can think of a wedding environment we all know what that is we know how that goes mm-hmm. but your church event um a volunteer might not know if it's their first time they probably don't know what's happening. They don't know what the key moments are and they don't know the duration between them or the distance from them. And wait, wait, I'm supposed to be taking a photo of the lead pastor praying at the beginning, but I'm also supposed to be getting behind the scenes photos of the, you know, volunteers getting ready. I can't do both of these ones. I got to prioritize. So, um, giving that shot list is a first step to make sure that those volunteers are ready for the event. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I've just recently kind of loosely formed our photography team. And it was literally, you know, talking to like the gal that did some family portraits from uh, for us um, it, back in December and talking to one of our French horn players who loves to shoot as well, you know, and it's, you know, she's the one that's like on the stage, you know, and it's like, okay, look, as soon as like the new people come up, can you put your horn down and run and grab some shots, you know, <laughs> and do all that. Um, but um you know, the, the shot list for the um, uh, events or for, you know, today we want to catch, you know, children hugging old people. You know, e- even if it's something as simple as that, just to gather elements for telling story um, like that, I think, I think it's huge. That's really good. Tell me about your team. I mean, what, 
I mean, I know you guys have like 10,000 people there and stuff, but I, I mean, are 2,000 of them your photographers? <laughs> <laughs> no, not not that many photographers. And uh, and hey, here's here's the deal. It's uh, it's easy to to falsely assume that the the bigger churches, you know, have it all easy because they have more people. But I would say the, the expectations are higher as well. And so there's a gift and there's a curse with a, with a larger congregation. Um, that so the the one of the kind of you know Justin you asked the question hey how do you start the first thing I would say is like start with a team this is a this is a good practice with any creative endeavor within a church that it's easy to if you've been hired as the Swiss Army creative or artistic staff member um, it can be easy for you to try to take on another uh, artistic discipline so maybe you're a strong videographer and hey we want you also to do for photography. If you start it by yourself and you don't build a team, then you're also going to have to manage it by yourself. So my, my counsel or encouragement for any church looking to, to start in this area is do not start with a, have a staff member oversee the volunteer recruitment and to find the volunteer leader and to build the volunteer team, but for them not to be the person doing it. So if you do, you're going to be the bottleneck for growth there. So um, don't, don't start until you have a team. Now, some of your listeners might be, well, that's too little too late. <laughs> We've already we've already started. I'm the only person. How do I transition this? And I would say that that's the next thing to start to transition with a team approach, um, and and to start to find those those volunteers that are out there, so that it's not all reliant on your shoulders. Um, and then the then the next thing is to like once you get those volunteers to find out where their gift mix is. Right. Uh, it's funny. I was in a I was in a single site church uh, of a thousand people, and. Um, I heard I heard word that there was a uh, photographer who would work for National Geographic. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is incredible. I can't wait to get this person on our team. Connected with this guy. He was incredible. I saw his work. Um, he took photos for an event, came back at, at, at me, and they were not the best because they were all wide establishing shots. And that was it. Um, his skill set was he was used to taking photos of um, of wildlife. And so he's very comfortable with um, animals, not so comfortable with people. And so he literally kept his distance from people in that event and he didn't take photos of them. Now, so I understood, hey, where is he at? He's, he's going to be my great wide establishing shots. If I need architectural photos, if I need event photos that capture the big wow, he is my guy. But I need to rely on some other people to get the closer intimate shots. So just uh, building the team and then understanding where your people's strengths or areas to develop are is key. Or you're going to put you're going to put the wrong person in the wrong place, and you're going to keep getting a, you're going to keep getting wrong results. I like it. How do you how do you gear a team, um, especially like how do you get them prepared? Hopefully, a lot of them will have their own gear if they're just naturally photographers. But maybe someone just says, "I like I like what you're doing, and I want to be a part." How would you go about taking care of them and, and prep, preparing them? That's great. Yeah. The, the first thing is invest in a low entry camera for the church. So a lot of people, <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll try to show up, right? Hey, Cam, I'm ready to take photos. I, you know, I'm ready to go here. Um, uh, so, like, so try to get them something better than their phone to take uh, photos on. And uh, for a church to invest in a low entry um, camera is a great way to start because you know that these people can come in and then you've, you've lowered that bar for entry. You're not waiting for them to buy, buy a, a whole range of prime lenses and a, you know, a, a, a high end uh, DSLR. They're able to jump in and, and borrow the churches. Now, as they develop and grow and get an appetite and experience for this, they're going to naturally want to invest their own money to probably upgrade and go beyond that. But that's, that's the first starting point is have that available for your volunteer. And I would say, you know, have multiple ones, so it's just not, it's not just the one volunteer who's training, but you have multiple volunteers who are training. Yeah, so you can, you can, some, you can some get gear. more done when you have two or three of them that you can put in someone's hand and then deploy them at the event. And you focus on the close-up hugs, you focus on what's happening on the stage, and you focus on people getting ready for it. Yep. Yep. Some type of training document as well. Again, like a, if you think of volunteers coming on, how do you onboard them as quickly as possible? These are all going to be similar volunteers doing similar jobs with similar gear, even a, tr a basic training manual, right? Like, hey, this is how you use this camera um, is, is, is a great way to, to start to prepare them. And then let them know what the X, so we talked about job description, we talked about training um, to give them some type of workflow. So after I'm done taking photos, well, what, what do I do then with it? And so, hey, have that on the back end, 
how to make sure that you have your volunteers trained for, hey, we're expecting you to do rudimentary editing, um, uploading, and then sending us a link so that we can decide, how, or some churches even go beyond that. It's not even editing and uploading. Hey, we give you freedom and we release you to, um, to posting this content as well, because we want to turn it around as quickly as possible. So um, what, what's the basic, what's their action steps after they're done taking photos? Uh, that should be clear going into it as well. What, what, the, what kind of workflow do you guys use? Um, what, what we do is we try to do everything except for the uploading. Okay. So we'll, um, yeah, well, we'll you mean the, by the uploading, you mean the actual posting to the appropriate channels. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Um, everything, but the posting gotcha. uh, and part of that is because we will plan out our social media calendar pretty far in advance and there might be something else that's hitting that day or, and so they're not aware of that. And to try to bring them into that conversation is a little too complex for them. And, and generally speaking, most photographers, that's not their sweet spot, right? It's, it's everything but the posting. Um, and so they're fine to not do that. It's very, they want to see their work or some of their work ultimately get posted somewhere. So uh, we will, after we've done that, Hey, everybody it's up or we'll let them know, Hey, check back on this platform. You'll see some of your photos then that's super encouraging for your people so that they know they're not doing all this work and it's just living in some archive uh, in the cloud somewhere, but it's actually getting in front of people's eyeballs at some, at some point. Uh, but we'll do everything but the, the posting on our end here at Christ Fellowship. I really like that, um, that idea of making sure that it's seen by somebody. Because I have seen that before where photographers come on, they take a bunch of shots. They're not the, you know, you, you only pick the fives. You know, if you rate your photos, you only pick the fives to put on publication. And some people just don't make that list and they get burned out after it happens a couple of times. Um, now, Ben, I want to I wanted to take it more to the actual telling the story and we, we, we know how to plan. Hmm. We know we need to get our team together. What kind of shots are you actually going to try to get that sets up for that moment, that storytelling, that moment. And, and, and I, you really called it, uh, what was it? An arresting picture, like mm -hmm. something that just captures your attention and tells that story in that moment. What kind of shots are you looking for specifically? The, the first one is I usually try to have the nine to one rule for, um, for candidates over posed. There, there is a time and place that you want to take posed photos and it is appropriate um, to do it. But generally speaking, um, I would say, Candidates are better for a couple of reasons. Uh, you think back, um, you know, a couple of decades ago for the, for the boomer generation, um, a sign of, um, of organizational um, strength and organizational success was, was an achievement. Because, hey, you know, organizations that succeed are doing something well. There's a lot more skepticism towards that now. With the younger generation looking at organizations, if, um, if things seem too polished, it's, there's, almost a, uh, there's almost a critical eye towards that. Um, there's, there's a higher degree of authenticity and intimacy that people are looking for any organization, especially the church organization that is in the business of giving intimacy with Christ and giving intimacy with each other. So... Uh, if you're taking all posed photos, then you're, you're working against that desire for people to see that you're real and authentic. Uh, when you take the candid photos, you're playing into that desire and you're giving them, you're helping um, satisfy that desire to say, hey, we are, we are real people on a journey towards God um, and that you're, you're invited in on this journey as well. So that's the biggest thing I, I, I encourage people is to um to avoid that uh, you know it takes a little it's, it's a little longer right let's be honest to, to take something posed it's easy you two guys get together and you look at me and you stand there so the lighting's good okay one two three got it i can move on that's relatively quick to to direct a moment it takes a little more patience uh to be there to get the candid ones as well another i'm going to be like really practical i know you guys love the practical stuff here really practical is to invest in a um an 80 to 200 lens or 70 to 200 lens um for um, so that you can zoom in and push in on this moment um, and have clarity. Uh, and so you get that nice tight shot for emotions, but you're not creeping on people and, uh, and getting up on their face. So like, that's really right. That's tough to be there for the candid photos, right? So that's one way to have a, a good uh, telephoto lens to get in on the action. And then I always tell my photographers too, is um, to let themselves settle in, into an environment before they take photos of the environment. So if I come in, I'm the photographer, and I come in and I, I just stand there and I start shooting right away. I make myself very apparent and I make myself to be a distraction. But if I come in as a photographer and, I, you know, I got the camera on my hip, it's, I'm not trying to hide it. But if I just come in and there, hang out, I'm leaning up against the wall and just relaxing, then people, in a sense, forget about me. 
And after a couple of minutes, I've established myself in that environment. Then I could slide and just start taking photos and I'm less of a distraction. So uh, to get those candids, telephoto lens and make sure that you settle into the environment before you take, before you start capturing. the environment. You know, doing, doing that also gives you as a photographer an idea of who's in there, who a major player is or who, you know, this, this guy is kind of a goof and a lot of people are laughing over there. So I want to, I want to keep coming back to him throughout the course of the evening or something mm -hmm. like that. You, know, you get to, you, you get to uh, peep the vibe basically of, of everything that's going on. So that, that's, that's really good. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 And you, 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 you don't just see things through the viewfinder, but you see the whole in experience and then you can start picking up moments. Like you said, like, okay, that's, that's a character or it seems like there's a lot of energy over there. I need to make sure I circle back and why ever, why people are gathered there. I need to go there. So uh, just uh, absorbing that the room first is super helpful. So we've been talking a lot about events, you know, what, you know, whether, you know, whatever's going on at the church or sponsored by the church or, you know, things like that. And so what, what about the actual church service? How do you guys handle it? You know, Justin and I always uh, coach uh, our members and, and our viewers that um, one of the biggest things that you can do on your church's website is show people that are actually, you know, no stock stuff. The only stock photography should be the stock library that you're currently building, you nice. know, and it, it should be the um, the people in your church, it should be, you know, a, a child getting hugged by an old person, you know, or, you know, so a couple of, couple of guys, you know, high-fiving each other or something so that people can look at it on the church's website in, in the artwork as they're going through the journey on the site and go, oh, that, that, that looks like me. They can identify with that. Now, so how do you guys handle it for the, the actual services, you know, not these extraneous things or sponsored things, but the regular run of the mill. Yeah, the first thing that's helpful is I think through in terms of a storyline. So we talked before about the difference of photo and film, um, but you can still use photography to tell a story arc and be it an event, be it a service, they all have some type of arc towards it. So again, this can, this can land in a, in, a, in a photo album, in a Facebook photo album. Maybe it's your, your Instagram um, uh, story feed during that day, but you could tell some type of story through the photos that you're taking. Again, bit, beginning, middle, and end, right? So broad brush strokes here. People are coming in, uh, you know, they're parking. Maybe a visitor's getting a high five as they're coming on. Uh, they they connect in the in the foyer environment. Come on and enjoy some worship. Maybe you have the photo of uh, the the preacher speaking that day, and then uh, someone you know got gathering some coffee and connecting with someone at the end of the service. So like you know, really, I think it's probably like six or seven photos there that just told an arc in terms of what happens on a regular weekend experience, and this is what you're going to experience. That's super helpful for people where they can place those moments in some type of timeline. Uh, again, that n that's not only for your service experience, but any event that you have, um, that which is which helps in terms of lowering the the bar and the fear of a potential event, right? Like if I was like small groups, I don't know what a small group's about. I've never been in a life group. I don't know what you know doing life together means. You guys keep on using this phrase. I have no idea what that means. To show photos, oh, um, of what a typical small group helps um, is very disarming because then people know what it is. Oh, they, they get together and everyone has scones and coffee. Okay, got it. Um, and then it looks like they're all laughing. So I think someones it's just a relaxed atmosphere. Uh, they're opening the, the word of God. I see they're, they're listening to something or watching a video. They're learning about that. And it looks like they're praying. So at the end, so I guess, okay, it's some type of intimate environment there as well. Okay, that looks relatively normal. I think I can join that. Um, those four, four quick snapshots, those four is told an arc. Again, it dis, uh, disarms people for the unknown. So when you tell stories, it helps place people in it, and then it disarms people for what it's going to happen, right? So I don't know what's happening. Now I have some type of visual representation. Ah, I, may, I now may opt in. So that's super helpful tell, telling a story. Um, do you want to capture... A lot of the same style. Um, I know we said we all have our um, strengths uh, as far as like kind of the shots that we naturally look for. My wife and I could not be more opposite because anytime I go, we go on vacation, all her shots are wide and all my shots are close. And, and she always says, why are you taking shots so close? Like you, you can't see we're on vacation. And I'm like, because I'm trying to capture how we feel when we're on vacation, you know, like so it's funny, you, walk, you look through our photo albums, it's like, it's just my child smiling, but you can't tell whether she's in Disney World or at Grandma's house. It's, I like those, those close-up shots 
Um, do you, in your shot list, do you kind of include, okay, get this kind of shot wide, get this one in close, or are you, you know, shooting from the hip? Do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Or do you, do you take the same subject and shoot it three or four different ways to make oh, sure yeah, that's that good, you get, good the, get the one for the, for the moment or what? Yeah, the, more the latter. So that, that's the, that's the first thing right there. So we'll give them a shot list, but then I don't I don't want to try to over explain things. But like we you just said there, Dave, make sure you get the same subject from multiple perspectives, um, multiple comp and multiple compositions. The the wide, medium, close. Uh, that's super helpful. There's some basic stuff like your establishing shot. You know, should probably be wide so people get a sense of how big this environment is or what what it looks like from wall to wall. So there's some basic stuff like that. And as the as the evening, the event progresses and becomes more intimate, you probably want to push in to get closer to that. Maybe it's got a keynote speaker. You want to see their emotion as they're conveying their, their main thought. Um, so there's some basic stuff to that. But as long as you are aiming for a range of composition and perspectives, um, you're, going to be, you're going to be pretty well covered. Uh, um, the, the, the one um, caveat I'd, I'd have here is um, not, like not only from – from the from your vantage point but also your subject right so it's the way you need to be a range in which how you're taking photos but there definitely needs to be a range on what you're taking photos of uh I've, I've, I've oftentimes told my photographers hey like um i don't mind if you flirt with a camera like i've done that before that's totally cool but i shouldn't know who your crush is based upon how many photos you have of them at the end of the night so if you there's a you know a guy or girl that you like that's fine that's you know um Hey, do your thing, but at the end of the night, I shouldn't see like 20% of this photos of this guy or this girl because you're just fix on, fixated on them. So again, um, I, I jokingly say that, but that's a good way for us to say, hey, don't take the same photo of the same person all the time. Um, is a good way to say that. Uh, and, I, see, and then, I see that a lot. And, and, and I see that a lot in two cases when I have formed or worked with a photography team. One, uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying everyone is like this. I'm saying the people that I worked with were like this. Uh, the older folk that I work with on the photography team that they love to take photos and stuff, really they like to take photos of their friends. And so when they, I get the camera back from them, it's mostly the other senior adults. Yep. The other one is the introverted people. I basically just get a bunch of photos of their friends. And um, is that something that you want to lean into or is that something that you want to say, okay, for this Sunday, I want to try this one other shot that's not your friends? Oh yeah. So for, yeah, don't just, don't just flirt with the lens and don't just be a, a friend with a lens. Um, it's super key. And I, I even push into this as well, that you need to avoid taking photos of just the beautiful people. And I, I say this because it's, it's an, first of all, it's a natural instinct of ours where we're all uh, attracted to beautiful things, be it a, a beautiful Ferrari, Ferrari in a car. And also people, right? We all like love symmetry and like it's just a, it's hardwired into us as, as humans. So we love symmetry and beauty and nature and we love that in other people as well. That's natural. But here's, a, um, here's the thing. If, you don't, if you're not aware of that and counterbalance that and take photos of all the people at your church, the people who are stunningly attractive um, and the people who are like just me, who just look normal, then you're gonna, your photos are just going to represent. Here's the key. Your photos are just going to represent the beautiful people and then you're going to send the community to, to the, the you're going to send the message to the community that only beautiful people are, are allowed here or welcomed here or wanted here and so you really need to work against that um because then that's what's going to show up on your website and you said that before right um so it's not only oh great we have we don't have stock photos we have photos of our people well we just have the photos of the beautiful people here and that sends a huge message to your community so like be aware of that and work against that you know, I think going right alongside of that, and I'm, I'm not a politically correct person by any means, but if you have uh, a diverse cultures of people in there, be sure you get a nice mix because a lot of people are attracted to seeing people that look like them. So if you have black people in your church, be sure that it's not like, not, it's, it's not like you know, 100%, you know, pretty young white families or pretty young old families or whatever, but, you know, it's... It, it shows those people, shows those people interacting with other people and stuff. But don't, I, I always tell people, don't go over, don't go, make sure you get the Asian guy. You know, we got one Asian guy, so be sure you get him. You know. He's on every web page. Huh? I said he's on every web page. Every, no, no, don't do that. If he's <laughs> there, do that. that's okay. But don't, don't go out of your way to say, and, you know, some of my best friends are Asian. Here's, you know, ping. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, don't do that. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's um, it's it's that delicate balance, and yeah. I think, and some people say like, oh, like what, what's the right thing? I don't want, I don't want to offend either way. Um, here's the, here's the deal: we're all gonna fall fall short. We're all gonna make mistakes, but just being aware of that, like that that bias is in us, and that um, that pre pre disposition is in us to maybe take photos of our friends or take photos of beautiful people. The fact that you're aware of that will, will start to counterbalance where you end in. So sometimes I've had photographers like, so does this mean like how many shots can I take in my friends? I'm like, no, no, don't worry about that. I'm not going to come and like count your shots here or, you know, Hey, this ethnicity was underrepresented in your photos. Bad you. No, no, no. I'm going to mention this to you. And the fact that it's going to be in the back of your mind, you're going to adjust accordingly and it's going to be good and that's okay. So, uh, so just mentioning that to people up front is helpful for them. And then, you know, we will all course correct accordingly as we go. So uh, if I can ask one more question, I know we're coming up on time, but there's one thing, Ben, that I think you might be able to finally put it to words. There's uh, something I teach a lot in the church website formula course that we have and throughout the time that I've been here with CTA uh, that I, I, I feel in my heart, and I, and I know if I explain it a hundred times, I might get it right a few times. So I'm wondering if you can kind of clarify this, because um, one of the things that I, that I want to impress upon people when they're shooting photos, not only for their website, for their Facebook and all that, is capturing not only the moment, but the emotion of the moment. You had talked about capturing the intimate moments, the joyous moments. Um, how do you plan for that other than again taking a thousand and maybe one of them works <laughs> but i think the most powerful thing you can do to capture not only the story of the event or of your sunday but also the emotion that feeling of this this person has found purpose and maybe i can too this person is is experiencing joy and life fulfilled in this moment of this picture maybe i can too can you explain more about shooting for those emotions to capture yeah. them yeah, that's, you bring up a great tension, right? So, so much of the, our, our spiritual journey is an internal thing. So it's like, you know, um, so I've, you know, I found Christ um, or I dedicated my life to him. Well, that oftentimes is a very internal thing. And sometimes it de doesn't demonstrate it at all externally. So how do you, how do you capture that? Sometimes you, we, we can't and that's fine. But it's realizing a lot of our faith is demonstrated in, in very demonstrative and emotional ways. So um, being aware of that, knowing where those land on your calendar in the course of your year, planning accordingly to capture those are key. So some basic ones that, you know, top of my head is baptism. That's one of the most visual and one of the most joyous moments of a believer's life. When you see them coming out of the water and they got their arms raised up and they are championing the fact that they are new life in Christ. They've gone from dead to alive. The water droplets are frozen in air. Oh my goodness. I could look at those photos forever and they never get old for me. Uh, those are beautiful things. Now, the one thing I'm coaching on give here is to coach your baptism baptizes or baptizes i don't know if i'm saying it properly i'm probably not um to baptizians uh, um we we would do this at liquid church we would always have um uh, whoever's baptizing them to make sure that we smile because oftentimes the person in the moment uh, is just so uh, overwhelmed that they look like a hot mess when they're coming out of water right like their their <laughs> mascara's running or they're crying and and then internally they're feeling this is powerful and this is beautiful but they might not demonstrate it so we would a really simple thing here whoever's baptizing them when you pull them out of the water you as much as you can demonstrate on your face what you think they we are feeling right now during this moment so that's that's a small um trick and you know technique to really capture those moments well um candlelight service right most churches do this completely uh intimate and vulnerable uh you get like a little kid holding a candle hopefully not catching the hair on flat fire it's beautiful you know that's gonna happen every year plan accordingly capture those emotions um uh, something like super super tender as well is um sometimes you have and this is like this so you're asking i'm telling you what moments to capture probably a good way a, a, a good principle here is to have patience and to have um, and have a degree of integrity. So, in other words, like you could you could you could catch your moments where you're invading someone's um, moment, right, with a camera, and you could you could you can in a sense um, compromise or devalue or erode it in some sense because you're coming in as an interloper, and so having that sensitive sensitivity to what does it look like? I, um, I know um, there was a, a moment where. We had a, a pastor going out and we were talking about uh, bereavement ministry and the fact that they were coming and praying with people, you know, um, a lot of people on their deathbeds. And we, we talked to a family, said, you know what, um, we would love to like showcase this, that this is happening in our church and this service is available for you if you, because people just aren't aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, 
but we, we, we need to do this with, and we don't want to pose this. We need to do this with somebody who's going through this and you guys are going through this right now. Would you um, give us the honor to come in and to capture this holy moment and to be with you during this? And they said, yeah. And so our photographer came in and they sat for an hour and they just listened and they cried accordingly with the family. And towards the end of it, they pulled out their camera and captured a couple of photos. So it takes intimacy, it takes patience to capture some of these motions, but this is key for us to, if we ultimately want to proclaim the fact that Jesus is transforming our lives, how do we anticipate those moments, capture those moments, and give ourselves the time and the relational capital to say, can I step into your moment and capture it to showcase what God is doing to others? Did I get you there? Man. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, Dave gets a tissue. Uh, I'm a robot, so I have no, no, I think that's great. I think, I think too, we get lost, including myself, we get lost and uh, we got to get this guys. Let's go in and get it. And you know, you brought up something, uh, both myself and the things that I've experienced, the best photographers are ones that are participating and not mm-hmm. just being a fly on the wall. And when he had mentioned uh, in the, in the, in the, um, um, I can't think of another word for it other than I've heard it called the Stephen ministry, you know, the, the bereavement <laughs> ministry. Um, having someone come and, and just be kind of be there. Um, that is intrusive. That is like, man, there, that is, that does make you feel taken advantage of almost, almost used, but having someone that is part of that ministry, grieving with you at that moment, praying with you and being there, and then at the same time, you know, with the family's permission, okay, we will capture some of this so we can spread the word and so others can be blessed as you're being blessed. I think that that brings a lot into, um, like you said, the integrity and the compassion of the ministry when you're not just trying to capture photos for advertisements, but you're trying to capture photos to encourage and compel and be a blessing to others. So I really like the way that you put that. Um, yeah. And just a, a, a real practical tip. Um, when you can turn off all shutter sounds on your, all the, beeping, <laughs> all yeah. the you know, even, even the, the DSLRs and stuff, they actually don't make noise when they, when, when, when the, you know, when there's an exposure and stuff, there's not the big click sound and stuff. And you turn that on, you know, and you can hear that, you know, like in press conferences and stuff where it's just like, you know, they've got those things turned up, you know, turn all that stuff off so that, you know, especially if it happens to be that you're catching that person you know, in the last day of their life, yeah. when the pastor leans in to give them a kiss on the forehead and tell them God loves them, you don't want to be clack, 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 clack. <laughs> or, or a flash to go off either. <laughs> right. Yes. Learn how to use available light and get fast lenses, people. <laughs> <laughs> and don't bring, don't bring a reflector in either. That's not going to help. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you might as well just bring a makeup guy. Uh, yeah. come. You, you don't uh, want to be the guy with the, with the light meter sitting there going, uh, hang on a sec. Um, see, we need a, need an F. F- Here, point here's a and, here's uh, the line. Here's yeah. the line. I think we just, I think we just jumped over it. <laughs> well, and, and I mean, it can't, I mean, you could have good intentions, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Had, I've had photographers that come up and be like, can you move your hair out of the way? And like, dude, we're praying right now. Like, get over it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Learn well, how to edit. <laughs> just a little numb to the moment. Ben, uh, thank you so much for taking time. Where can people learn more about what you're doing, follow you and connect with you? Yeah, I'd love for them to connect to my website, uh, benstapley.info. They can follow me on the social media platforms at Ben Stapley or email me, benstapleygmail.com. Awesome. Dude, thanks for like carving some time out to hang out with us. We really appreciate it, brother. It's great. I can't wait to hear the next training. I always love giving with you guys and receiving from you as well. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ben, for taking your time to hang out with us and... Fill us with some fantastic knowledge. That was Ben Stapley, guys. Um, ben is um, brought up. He brought up a lot of really good points, and, and two things that really jumped out at me um, are the idea that that you need to have a shot list when when there's an event. You know, one of the things that that we're starting at our church with the photography uh, team is that I will. I will say, you know, hey, we're going to be having baptisms um, this week, or we're going to be having, um, we're going to be introducing a bunch of new members this week. So uh, we need somebody to like get the shot of like everybody up there, you know, kind of the you know the wide shot and all that, and then somebody to get close ups and stuff. So 
um, you know, knowing the kind of shots that you need to have will help you assign your team. And that's the other big thing that I got uh, out, of, out of talking with Ben was the need to have a team. And when you have a team, you can have people specialize. So if you have a shot list, you know, if we're doing a wedding or if we're doing, a, you know, a youth event or um, it just whatever's going on there and you have this 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 list of shots that you want to get things that you're specifically looking for number one it helps you be focused on looking for the things that you're trying to accomplish and not just kind of randomly wandering around going is this a good picture is this a good picture and taking a million pictures right you can be focused you know i'm looking for um elderly people and kids um interacting with each other and being you know being happy and, and goofy or something like that so that's what you go in and you know looking for but then also having a team you can you can basically have someone who is assigned to get the establishing shot get the overall um uh, shot of the event the you know, here is here's the thing that's happening this gigantic group of people um you know then have a person that is the person that's getting the detail shots okay so i want you getting the human interactions i want you to get people conversing with each other and doing all that and then i love getting things candid that the candid shots are the ones that that bring in um the actuality of the uh the event the emotion a life that's happening there uh, like justin was saying uh, at the beginning that there's stock photography you know shaking hands you know that kind of stuff that's cold that's stock that's you know we need a picture of a guy shaking hands you know okay shaking hands i mean it's a, whatever but when you get two people in a warm embrace that's the like hey these guys like each other these are old friends you know these are um that that elderly person really loves that five-year-old you know i mean that's the kind of stuff to get. So the candid shots, the in-the-moment shots like that. And we talked about not shooting like a million shots but being deliberate. Um, that does not mean that you won't fire off quite a few in a sequence. There's times to do that. And, and you know, I used to do that when I was shooting film and I had to develop film. I had to pay to develop film. So when something is, is going on, when somebody is running by, like I used to shoot track. So when someone is, when the guy is running and getting over the hurdles, if I just wait for that second that his leg is up like that, I've missed the shot. So I'm going to go, I had a motor on the camera, you know, clack, 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 as he went over the hurdles and stuff. And then I could get the one for the thing. It's the same thing. Um, for the intro to our church's um, podcast, um, I was I was in the foyer shooting just pictures of people interacting, trying to get some, some human interaction loving shots. And this guy who's about my dad's age ran into someone who is about my grandmother's age, like in her, I don't know, early 90s or something like that, late 80s. And uh, they hadn't seen each other. It was, like, it was like it was his, his you know, grammar school teacher or an old Sunday school teacher or something. And they had not seen each other in a long time. And I was able, you know, I was like, oh, this is happening. So I just started firing off, getting them coming together and hugging and, and embracing and all that. I was able to use that in, as part of the intro because, you know, if I were waiting for that one perfect shot, you know, that's, that's not going to work. Now, if there is something where just like a little cluster of people that are talking and, you know, they're just sort of nodding like that and laughing and all that, and then you're just like, click, 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 I mean, you're wasting time. You can tell the story by going click, uh, click, click, and then have those three and then figure out which one is best and move on. So anyway, that's all parenthetical. I just thought I'd share that with you, some thoughts from the episode. Um, if you guys are enjoying this and stuff, be sure to like, comment, ring the bell, all that other kind of great stuff. Uh, Justin and I come here each week uh, on YouTube and Facebook to uh, help teach you guys and learn from you guys and learn with you guys how to use and exploit media and technology. The whole goal here is to take the gospel to the world and to use the fantastic media and tech that is out there and available to us in a lot of cases freely to us to to do it. So that's what we're here for. So anyway, if you want to go a little bit deeper in this, I'm going to have a little playlist over here that you can take a look at um, that has a little bit more about the photography, a couple of videos on that, uh, some photo editing, things like that. So um, just take a look at that, help you go a little deeper. And uh, until next time, y'all take the stuff that you've been learning today and use it to go change lives.